am i audible so we are going to start our second technical session by dr ritika yeah good afternoon sir good afternoon dr ritika welcome to the faculty development program thank you sir and uh, mentally session is very important to make participants to be aware that what is citation what is reference yes sir manage citation and references and for that what are the tools available so mentally can help them facilitate them to organize their entire uh, references and make more value addition for their uh, research work for their research paper yes sir so i think uh, it is 2 o'clock okay. yes sir yes, yes sir. sir you may start now yeah very very good afternoon to all the participants and the speaker of the program hope you all had a wonderful lunch at your home today we are privileged to have dr ritika vasan madam with us she is presently working as a associate professor at pgkm new delhi she did phd from sharda university and mca from ip university is she is taking care of our official journal bvkms international journal of information technology publishing by the springer and listed at uc scopus and the ugc clear list ma'am is working as a managing editor of that journal and he has published number of good research papers in various international and national journals and conferences including sci scopus and cvs springer it is very interesting and important topic for all the researchers and the teachers how to manage your references section of the paper and the thesis and mendeley is one of the best tool which i had personally used in my thesis so now now without much ado i would like to request ritika madam to please take over the session and alighting us upon the mendeley ma'am please you are most welcome thank you vishal sir thank you for the wonderful introduction and a very good afternoon to all welcome to the world of smart technical writing from mainly okay uh, the first question that comes in mind as soon as i hear any new name is that uh, why am i actually coming across it so why do you need mainly well if you need to manage a large number of references and citations as part of your research teaching or administrative work remember mainly is not just for your research work or for your thesis writing citations nowadays important part of any technical document writing uh, what is a citation obviously a citation is nothing simply speaking it is a specific source that you mention in the body of your paper you are actually crediting some author for his work that you are using in your paper so that is actually citation uh, any kind of citation that you need to do in any kind of uh, technical document that you are preparing obviously citation management tools are an answer to automate that process of citation management so these autom uh, these citation management tools they actually provide you a simple way to store organize and retrieve your documents and your citations in an effective manner they also help you in formatting your in text citations and bibliographies in your work so uh first we will start with understanding what is actually mendeley so as you can see uh mendeley is a tool it is actually i would say it is a free reference manager available on all popular platforms and in all popular web browsers so your mendeley when you talk about it it is actually a tool a citation management tool that is a combination of two basic parts the mendeley desktop application uh which is called as the mainly desktop and that you will be downloading on your system from which you intend to build up your library or work with mainly and obviously a website which will help you to manage share and discover both content as well as research contacts along with that so that was the first uh, basic feature of mainly it will uh, help you organize your documents and references it will uh, along with that mainly will also help you to collaborate with your fellow researchers online by joining and working together in groups so with mainly you can collaborate with your co fellow researchers your own team you can make a private group you can share the same document with all members of your group you can keep uh, editing those documents as you people want you can keep adding in content as you want and yes not just your own group you can even collaborate with researchers online 
in existing groups in areas of uh, your interest or your domain so that is the second use of mainly um mainly uh, am i audible now ma'am snehalata ma'am i was not audible i hope i am audible now you are perfectly fine ma'am okay ma'am in that case if anybody has any issues kindly check your net connection uh, anyways uh, mainly the second feature of mainly was it allows you to collaborate online and uh, along with collaborating online mainly can also help you to discover readership statistics and recommendations regarding your own work as well as other work in which you are interested so it helps you in staying updated and helps you in learning more uh, remember mainly community as on date is such a wide and globally accepted community that over 6 million researchers around the globe they trust mainly to share their ideas see what's new in their field and discuss their development among their print research groups so that is the power of the mainly citation management tool that we are going to see today that we are going to discuss and understand today so uh, simply speaking mainly is three basic functions it is a mainly is a reference manager that will allow you to manage read share annotate and cite your research papers it is also an academic collaboration network with 6 million users to connect like minded researchers and discover research trends and statistics and along with that it is also forming a crowd sourced database with a unique layer of social research information and an open api so that is the complete functionality of the mendeley citation management tool when i state it in three simple notations so i hope everybody is clear with the basic idea of mainly uh three basic key values reference manager i repeat again research networks and groups and research data and api uh now we start having a look into what is mainly how are we going to use uh, mainly in this case the first and basic capability of mainly that is most important to us as uh, administrative workers as uh, teachers as learners or as uh, technical writers is the reference manager mainly will allow me to manage my references it will allow me to build my library of references and allow me to cite them in papers what i have to do for that obviously for the first and foremost task i'll have to do for that is i'll have to sign up for mainly online uh to sign up for mainly remember the only simple thing you need to do is you need to go to mainly.com www.mainly.com and there you need to create your own free account and remember this account will remain free throughout your life throughout the time that you keep using mainly never are they going to ask you for a penny and never have i myself given them any single penny for this account so your mainly account is the first step that you will be taking you towards creating and maintaining your mentally library once you create a free account on mentally you are given a username and password and along with that you will be redirected to the next step of installing mentally desktop now understand i told you in the very beginning mentally itself it is a uh, collection of two components the mentally web and the mentally desktop when you talk about the mentally web the mentally web is the complete online community of all mentally users uh all your work that you do on mainly that means your complete library that you will develop on mainly that you will maintain on mainly once you develop it from your system you can access it anywhere uh on all platforms or all devices that means i can even access my mainly library from my smartphone from my smart i can even access my i can even access my mainly library from uh, my uh laptop i can access it from my desktop so i can access it on any machine which has a uh, viable internet browser and i can log into mainly.com through that so that is the first part of the mainly that is the mainly.com remember all your work yes sir it is freely downloadable once you sign up on mainly.com it will redirect you to the link to download mainly desktop you will find on that same page that will give you your username and password you will find a link a button to download the mainly desktop using that button you can download the mainly desktop compatible to your own system that means whatever platform you are working on 
you can easily download Mendeley desktop for that particular uh, platform. Uh, Mendeley compatible version across the most commonly used platforms, mainly Windows and Linux, uh, are actually available. So there is no issue in downloading a Mendeley desktop. Any problems you face while downloading of Mendeley desktop, the Mendeley web community is so active that you, if you simply copy the error that you are getting and you paste it on the Mendeley community, you will uh, immediately get a reply to your problem. Aparna ma'am, yes, Mendeley is compatible with Latex. Uh, during the end of my slides, I'll even explain you how you can make Mendeley work with Latex. So Mendeley can even be used with Latex. Uh, there are no issues in that case. So that is the very first step that we were discussing that you have to create a free account on Mendeley. And once you create your free account, you will have to download the Mendeley desktop for any particular platform that you can want to download it on, whether it be Windows, whether it be Mac, whether it be Linux, whatever platform you are actually working on, you can download your Mendeley desktop for that platform. Once you download your Mendeley desktop, obviously you are ready to build your library. How do we build a library on the Mendeley desktop? Uh, well, first time you will log into Mendeley desktop and you will open your Mendeley desktop. It will ask you to log in. Once you log in, this is the Mendeley desktop overview that you can see over here on the slide. Now, this Mendeley desktop, if you have a look, it is uh, divided into three main windows that we have. The first window on the left hand side that I see, the window on the left post side is actually my Mendeley library. Uh, this Mendeley library, if you have a look, the very first time that you will have actually uh, have a look at this library, this will have certain pre-installed uh, folders that will actually be visible uh, into your library. And these folders are nothing. It uh, Mendeley will offer you a literature search capability. It will provide you a Mendeley uh, suggest option. You will have an all documents folder, which will contain all the documents that are there in your library. You will have a recently added options. You will have a recently uh, read options, a favorite option. Any of the documents or any of the uh, manuscripts you read and you like it and you want to mark it as your favorite manuscript, that is important uh, in your work. Your work is actually a simulation of that particular manuscript. So you can mark it as your favorite. Uh, needs review, uh, along with downloading of uh, manuscripts, Mendeley will also fetch the metadata for that manuscript. Now let's say, I have a bit of problems with the metadata for that particular manuscript and I want to review it again. I can even mark that manuscript for review. My own publications, I can even maintain in my Mendeley library, uh, in my publications folder. And after that, unsorted, you will have uh, an option called as create folder. The create folder option will allow you to maintain a folder with your own work. Simply understand what is the idea of creating a folder in this case. Uh, Mendeley allows you to store n number of documents or all the references that you want to cite in your paper. But obviously every technical paper that I write, that is, of, I would say, a different assignment that I have. So for each assignment, how does Mendeley assign my or manage my documents? How does it manage my files? How does it remove redundancy from that? So for each particular document, what I have to simply do is that first of all, I have to create my own folder for that particular uh, library or that particular assignment that I want to build up. Once I create my own folder, I can add documents to that folder. And how the documents will be added, I'll be demonstrating it to you. So that is my leftmost library. This actually shows me an overview of my Mendeley library. Uh, any folder that I open in this library would be visible in my central workspace which is uh, at the moment showing all the documents. So the central workspace will view or show you all your documents and any documents that you click on from the central workspace, the metadata of this document will be visible on the right hand side. So if you have a look at the Mendeley desktop, Mendeley desktop is divided into three uh, windows which have a left to right associativity. Any change in the leftmost window is visible in the central workspace. And any change in the central workspace or any clicks on the central workspace will take you to the rightmost workspace window. Below your Mendeley library on the leftmost side, you have another option. This is called as filter option. Obviously, once you start using Mendeley, I would suggest try inculcating Mendeley in your daily writing. Once you inculcate Mendeley in your daily writing, 
your technical writing work will reduce by half because you will no longer have to manage your references and citation mainly will do it automatically for you but once mainly starts doing it automatically for you obviously the size of my library keeps on increasing with time now let's say i added a document a few days ago and i want to search for that document once again in my library how do i do that to do that i have an option over here that gives me the filter option i can filter by author i can filter by year i can filter by a number of other uh, uh, keywords that are specified in this option so that is the basic uh, window that i have for my mainly desktop uh, this is my library structure in the leftmost window all my references are visible in a particular for a particular folder for a particular library they are visible in the center most window and the document details or the metadata for each and every document is visible in the rightmost pane of many next thing that i have is how do we drag and drop documents to my mainly or how do i build up my mainly library understand this thing to build up your mainly library uh, there are two options you can easily drag or drop your documents or you can add them from the web how do you add them from the web or how do you uh, drag and drop these documents for that i'll take you to my own mainly desktop uh, I'll start sharing my own mainly desktop with you people. Uh, now I think uh, everybody will be uh, looking at a desktop. It is my own mainly desktop. Uh, if you have a look at this mainly desktop, we'll do a quick revision. My mainly desktop is divided into three parts, but at the moment you can see only two windows in my mainly desktop. The left-hand window is my library pane. and uh, my library over here is showing you my publication folder it is showing you all of my publication any of these publications that i click on uh, i do a single click remember if i do a single click on any of my publications it will take me to the rightmost pane that will show me the details of this publication uh, it will show me uh, what kind of publication it is that means what type of publication it is whether it is a general article whether it is a web page whether it is a book uh, chapter or whether it is a simple uh, i would say conference proceeding remember all types of documents can be stored and maintained by mainly if you have a look i have clicked on the type and it says book general article book session case computer program conference proceeding encyclopedia article and the list is though finite but uh, the list is exhaustive uh, next this shows me the title of my document it shows me the authors it shows me the general option it shows me the year my document was published it shows me the volume number the issue number and the pages so remember this metadata regarding each document that i have this will be by fetch by mendeley itself and most of the data is mostly fetched by mendeley if for any particular document you see that some data is missing and you want to add that particular data to your mendeley even adding is allowed so your third window the metadata window will even allow you to edit data for example if i click on this publication of mine uh, i can not see the general year or volume any details that i would like to answer uh, enter into the that in that case what i'll simply do is i'll double click on the field and i can enter the values in any of the fields that i want If you have a look over here, I clicked on double click on here, and uh, yes, ma'am, we will need Jyoti, ma'am. We will need internet to use uh, Mendeley every time, but you will need internet to build your Mendeley library. Once your Mendeley library is built up, your Mendeley library is uh, full. In that case, if you want to cite uh, doc, uh, cite the uh, references into your document, you don't need the Mendeley web. uh you simply need your mainly desktop running and you can easily cite it into your word stock you only while building my mainly library do i need to have a internet connection so that is the only requirement of internet for mainly desktop so this is how i can edit the details of my documents now second feature that i have if you have a look at the central pane this is uh, displaying my publications and if you have a look uh, this uh, display itself is a tabular fashion and it is in a citation style by default uh, my selection of citation style in this case is a uh, ieee style because i find that easy to work with but if you have a look what i can do is 
I can go to the view option and the view option gives me first two options library as citations and library as a table. Right now I am viewing my library as a table. If I want I can view my library even as citations. So you have a look I, as soon as I've clicked on view library as citation because my formatted citation style over is IEEE my library has actually changed to the IEEE style. So this is the first only uh, trial and error way of adding references to your document. If all the references that you need to add to your document are in the same style, that means you have already worked with some document and uh, now you don't want to rework on it with Mendeley. The only thing you want to do is you need to add your bibliography. So this is the simplest mechanism of adding your bibliography. Build up your Mendeley desktop library and uh, copy the complete folder. Uh, copy control C and control V in whatever citation style that you want. Yes, whatever citation style that you want. If you have a look over here, my citation style is IEEE, but I can even change the citation style. Again, if I go back to the view option, the next option that I have is citation style. And if you have a look over here, almost all the different citation styles are available over here. Uh, one thing I like to ensure over, I like to make clear over here, because uh, I can see the participants over here, they are from different domains. We have people from CS, we have people from Arts, we have people from Humanities. So it, uh, please don't think that Menle is only for people from uh, IT background or Computer Science background. Menle is a citation management tool that can help you manage your citations in your own, be it Humanities, be it Management, be it IT. So any of your domain, Menle will help you manage the citation. Most of the common citation styles are already installed into the Mende library. But if you have some other citation style, you write a paper for a specific journal and it has its own citation style guide and citation style file. The only thing you will have to do is you can directly download that particular style. Uh, go to the more style option that will open the more style window. And uh, you can have a look at the install style. You can get more styles from the web. Or you can simply copy uh, by download style. You can enter the URL over here and you can download the particular style file. If you know the proper abbreviations for that particular style, you can again import the style file into your Mendeley account. So that is how you can have numerous style options over here. And that is how I can actually uh, see or view all my citations in any particular style. Uh, that I want. I'll go back to the table style. I find it easier to work with this table style. The next option that we have in this Menle is obviously the first uh, use of Menle is how do I build my own online library? Obviously that is the first and foremost use that I'll have. So let's say if I want to build my own online library, the option is I can first create a folder with any given name. Uh, let's say in this case I create a folder called uh, Fine. Uh, let me say, let me enter today's date. Uh, I say 13 July. Now this is my folder 13 July that I'm saying. And uh, to this folder now, I want to add certain documents. To add documents into this folder, remember I'll go to the first option. The first option is you can easily add your files from Mendeley itself if the files are there on your desktop. So I click on the file option. It gives me two options, add files and add folder. Uh, if I click on add files, add file will allow me to add one individual file manually every time. So obviously that is going to be a cumbersome task uh, if I have to do that for too many files. But uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'll show you how we can add files in this case. So um, let's say I select a file from any of my folders. Uh, I go to this particular folder. And I select the first file in this case. So as soon as I select the first file, you will have a look. My first file, we copy reference style from Google Scholar. Yes, ma'am, we can do that. I'll also demonstrate that. That is the second option. So just give me five minutes. Let me complete with this first option. So that is the first task that we have in this case. Uh, I have added a file into my folder basically. Second thing that I can do is I have too many documents in my folder. So adding one file at a moment will obviously not serve my purpose. So 
So what I can do is I'll go back to the file option or you can click on this add shortcut and uh, I'll select the add folder option from this. Now the add folder option, now if you have a look, it just takes me to all the folders on my system and I can add any folder from here. All the documents in this particular folder will actually be uh, added to my folder in Mendeley. So have a look, I've selected the same folder and all documents from this particular folder of mine have been imported into my Mendeley library. Uh, once all of this has been done, now the second uh, option that I have is, the second problem that I have is that uh, at the moment I had only five documents in this folder. But obviously this is a technical paper I am working on, so I'll keep adding documents to my folder. So does that imply that every time I start with Menle or I start working with Menle, every time I add a few documents to my folder, I'll have to keep adding the documents again and again. Why not have some automated mechanism through which Menle can actually check, keep a watch on this folder of mine and keep a check that uh, whatsoever new documents will be added in the folder, it will keep importing them into the Menle desktop or the Menle library folder I connected with. Yes, that is also possible. For that, you have a third option over here called as watch folder. If you click on this watch folder, the watch folder uh, allows you to select what folders you want Mendeley to watch for. So any new PDF in these folders will be directly imported into Mendeley automatically the next time you will be starting on your Mendeley. So if you have a look, my watch folder option as soon as I enable, it allows me to select a particular folder. And let's say my eSeller folder has been automatically selected in this case because I just added a few files from eSeller. I select the eSeller folder and I click on OK. So what does this imply? This simply implies that now next time I add any new files into the eSeller folder, they will be automatically synced with my Mendeley uh, folder, eSeller or uh, 13 July that I have made in this case. So that was the first option. Uh, importing files from your system, you can even drag and drop them if you want. But that is the first option. But obviously this is a very limited option. Uh, most of the good publications nowadays that we have, they are avail uh, available on Elsevier, Scooper, Science Direct. And a major problem with all these engines is the fact that obviously uh, none of these publications are actually available free of cost or in open access mode. Uh, my institute either needs to have a membership of any of these uh, search engines or I myself need to have an individual membership to access these papers. So what do I do? How do I add these references or how do I go through these papers? And obviously uh, for any good publication or for any good paper, if you submit it to any good general, they would expect you to have a few good citations from such good publications like uh, Elsevier, Science Direct or uh, Scoopers and so on. So what can I do for that? The second op option that Mendeley allows me is Mendeley allows me to directly import references from the web. This is the Mendeley web importer tool that we have. If you go on to tool, you will see an option install Mendeley web importer. Now understand, Mendeley web importer is a simple tool that will allow you to, uh, that will allow Mendeley to import any of the documents that are available on the web and that you will like to add to your Mendeley library. Uh, the Mendeley Web Importer, as soon as you will click on Mendeley Web Importer, the Web Importer is nothing. It is a simple small uh, icon that will appear on your browser. Again, I repeat, Mendeley Web Importer is available for almost all the web browsers that we have. The common, most common web browsers. In this case, I am using my default browser uh, as Firefox. And uh, I'll start sharing the Firefox window with all of you. Uh, you will see as soon as you will click on Mendeley Web Importer, uh, it will take a few seconds. But after a few seconds, you will have a look that in your web browser, after your address bar in the right hand most corner, you have an option called as a red icon, which is the Mendeley logo. And that if you take your uh, mouse pointer on, it says Mendeley Web Importer. So once you install this Mendeley Web Importer, what you can directly do is, you can have any of the documents from the web directly imported into your library. And a good news here is that since 2011 onwards, 
uh, Mendeley has uh, partnered with Elsevier. Mendeley was overtaken by Elsevier. So now any good documents from Elsevier Science Direct, they can be directly imported into your Mendeley library. How we can do that, I'll show that to you. But before we do that, uh, one thing that we'll have to do is, um, your Mendeley desktop has an option called as Sync. This Sync option synchronizes your library with the Mendeley web and I would click on it. Now understand what is the meaning of this Sync option. I told you in the very beginning that Mendeley is a combination of two basic parts, your Mendeley desktop and the Mendeley web. Your Mendeley web is protected or is secured by your Mendeley account. That means your username and password that has been allocated to you the first time you signed into Mendeley.com. Using that same username and password, you have actually logged into Mendeley web desktop. Your Mendeley desktop is your area, your work area on your system through which you are actually working with uh, your Mendeley system. So uh, now any work that I do on my desktop, what next feature did I tell you for Mendeley? That anytime, anywhere on the go, I can access my Mendeley account, I can access my Mendeley library and I can work on it. To enable this particular task of working with my Mendeley library anytime, anywhere that I want to work with it, I have a feature called as Sync. So this Sync feature will do nothing. It will synchronize your library with your Mendeley web. That means all changes, all work that you have done on your Mendeley library will be synchronized with the Mendeley web. The Mendeley web is backed by the Mendeley cloud that will store all your work, your Mendeley library on the web protected by your username and password. So stay uh, safe. Uh, your work is safe under your username and password and it cannot be accessed by anybody. Uh, Ma'am, I will also told you how to, I will tell you how to add a citation, but I will go step by step, so kindly maintain patience. So this is how your sync uh, function will help you sync your work on your Mendeley desktop with your work on the Mendeley web. So uh, that is how we enable the sync option. I have enabled the sync option. And now from here, I go back to my uh, browser. Once I go back to my browser, you have a look. I am in my right most corner. I have the Mendeley web importer option. Uh, the Mendeley web importer, how do I use it? First of all, obviously, I need to find some particular uh, documents that I would like to get into my library. So let's say I go to Google Scholar. And uh, let's say the area that I'm currently working on is education and COVID-19. So I type education and COVID-19. And as soon as I type education and COVID-19, you will have a look. I have a number of documents which are available in this case. The first document, if you have a look, it's a simple web page from the lancet.com. I click on this web page. And as soon as I click on this web page, uh, the complete document, uh, uh, the complete article opens up for me. Now, I want this article to be imported into my library. How do I do that? I click on the Mendeley Web Importer option. Remember, first time you click on Mendeley Web Importer, it will ask you to sign in. Uh, next time and subsequently, when you keep, keep on uh, using the Mendeley Web Importer, obviously, it doesn't ask you to sign in. But the first time you will click on Mendeley Web Importer, it will ask you to sign in with your username and password. Uh, you can sign in with your username and password. I am already signed in. So it shows me the Mendeley Web Importer window. Now, if you see the Mendeley Web Importer window, it has already imported the reference of this particular web page that I want. Uh, it says COVID-19 and medical education by authors Hanad Hamid and Muhammad Ala Fatal. Uh, the Lancet Infectious Diseases, it is showing the volume here uh, and the article details. Uh, next, I need to select the folder. Now understand, in case you don't have any folders, obviously your document that you are importing will actually be imported into all documents. But in case you have a specific folder, you can even add your document to that particular specific folder of yours. In this case, I have a specific folder called as 13 July. I don't want this to go into online learning. I want this document to go to 13 July. So I'll click on 13 July and see at the top, my select all and the document, uh, the folder is 13 July. And I can now click on add. As soon as I click on add, obviously this will add the document to my 13 July. 
we go back to the desktop and we'll check that later on before we'll add a few more documents so i go back to my page and next if i have a look at my page let me find some uh, research paper so the next i have is uh, okay fine let's come to this particular publication using technology to maintain uh, this is an elsevier publication that i have now have a look as soon as i click on any elsevier publication what did i tell you in the beginning uh, elsevier has partnered with mendeley since 2011 so mendeley is already uh, taken over by elsevier as a result all elsevier documents all uh, science direct documents can directly be imported into your mendeley library and if the document is open access good news you will get the complete pdf of the document available if it is not open access you have the export option over here and the export option if you click on that if you have a look it shows save to mendeley save to mendeley will again take you to the mendeley web portal it will allow you to save the uh, citation file to mendeley but obviously in this case i even have the download option so i can download it uh, i can download the actual pdf if i don't want to download it what i can actually do is uh, i can again go back to the mendeley web portal i can select on this particular document my folder which is already there and i can simply click on add uh my document has been added uh let me see if in some other documents are there in this which i can add to my uh i go go to this document uh, this is some journal of dental education to 2020 from villay online library impact of covid 19 on dental education in the us uh, let me click on this now this is from villay so villay obviously uh, it is not uh, partnered with elsevier so if you have a look here i don't have an export option i don't have a download option i don't have a share option but i have my mendeley web importer that is available so with mendeley web importer i can even uh add this reference to my library i again click on mendeley web importer uh the same document impact of covid 19 on dental education in the united states is already here and i simply click on the add button uh it says uploading impact of covid 19 on dental education failed well uh, let's recheck it again i just wanted the reference uh well let's have a look now uh, i have added a few documents to my mendeley library now let's see if this documents actually appear in my mendeley library to actually check for that obviously what will i have i had to go to i'll go back to my mendeley desktop so i open my mendeley desktop and if i open my mendeley desktop uh this is my mendeley desktop i will uh, it is still syncing because i've synced today for the first time that will take uh, some time uh once i go back to my mainly desktop it is still syncing so it will take some time but let us understand what you have to do once you have imported certain documents into your library from the mainly desktop the only thing you have to do is you have to sync your library again uh using the sync option once you sync your library again all the documents that you import from the mainly web importer that means from your browser to your mendeley library would be visible in your mendeley library uh that is how you build up your library or your reference manager what that is the first task of uh, mendeley citation management that it will help you build your library and your reference manager any doubts anybody has still here uh you can discuss in the chat window i am ready to take uh, doubts any doubts you people have till here we can take those doubts if no doubts we can proceed further uh how to add uh, audio is not coming it shows connecting sir kindly check with your internet connection because i think from my side everything is fine i hope i am audible to the others um uh, sync with n vivo sir mainly sync feature is only a feature that is available within mainly desktop and the mainly web so even if you are using it on any platform i have not worked with it on n vivo so i won't comment on that but you can obviously check on mendeley.com and uh, i think it is even going to work if you have a uh, mendeley desktop uh, available over there for this particular platform 
yes obviously the same feature is going to work for it there is no problems in that uh, any other questions that we can have how to add the citation for working paper using mainly ma'am you can add citation for any particular paper uh, the working paper if it's your paper and you're still working on it i don't think it will have a citation till the point of time you get it published somewhere or you get it communicated somewhere so until that point of time adding a citation for that particular paper would be difficult but yes if you want to add a citation you can build your own citation by simply adding that document to your mendeley library uh, click on that document go to its metadata whatever details will be there in the metadata that will be automatically added in whichever document you will cite your paper actually uh, then uh, next question that i have is from bhavna ma'am she says when we copy reference style from scholar then plagiarism comes by plagiarism checker in reference if we change the reference style in it without doing manually then there will, will there be plagiarism shown ma'am uh, mendeley is free of all of this simply try to understand mendeley is simply maintaining your own document library your own reference library and it is adding references to your document i'll be showing you the adding references part we haven't come to that part but remember all of this is completely free of plagiarism the plagiarism that generally comes in bibliography whenever we write papers and we submit papers somewhere is not due to copying the references uh, from mendeley that plagiarism is due to because you have copied the references from let's say some existing paper available on google or google scholar or any other uh, publication and it is in the same order or in the same uh, uh, number uh, that you have cited it in your own paper so with mendeley if you are uh, actually building up your citations and you are building up your bibliography chances of plagiarism reduce because you add papers one by one uh, you cite papers one by one in your document and in the order that you will cite the papers in your document mendeley is going to build the bibliography in that same order so in that case the chances of plagiarism will obviously reduce um bhavna ma'am only as every time we need internet that i answered previously uh, you will require internet only to use the to build up your mendeley library once your mendeley library is ready and if you only want to cite it in your document you won't require an internet connection uh, for that uh, yes it can be integrated with latex aparna ma'am we will be discussing it lastly uh, it is freely downloadable and that was the only set of questions so i think we can proceed further now uh all the questions uh, up till now have been answered i hope it is clear to everybody so we may proceed further uh now i have a few documents in my library while it is sinking without wasting time the next thing that i want to do is my library is built up everything is ready i want to actually uh, add or cite these documents into my page or i want to actually cite these documents into the technical document that i was working on so what i have to do for that before going on to your word or your technical document one another feature of mendeley that you have if you go to the tools option it shows you a feature called as in uninstall uh, my case it is showing uninstall ms word plugin in your case when first time you don't have install ms word plugin uh, it will show you an option called as install ms word plugin now what do you mean by this option install ms word plugin try to understand uh microsoft office word in its document has a tab called as the references tab uh i'll open my word document also uh this is my word document and this is the references tab that i have opened now if you check for this references tab i did my i submitted my thesis uh back in the year 2000 uh, uh 14 uh, early 2004 oh, it is not visible sorry uh, ma'am i haven't shared it i'll have to share it i forgot sorry i hope now it will be visible in a few minutes i submitted my thesis back in the year and that point of time uh, i was given the instructions by my university that there would be chapter and referencing as as, as well as there would be uh, thesis and referencing the problem was at that time i had no knowledge of mendeley i did not used to work with mendeley so the only option that was available for me at that point of time to build references was to use the microsoft office word uh, citations and bibliography uh, options that was available now the problem with working with microsoft word was that for a citation and bibliography 
I have to manually add each of my citation into my document. Manually adding a citation implies I need to have all the metadata for that particular citation. I need to have the complete author list. I need to have the title. I need to have the year of publication. I need to have the volume. I need to have the number of pages. I need to have the general name, and everything needs to be correct. And manually adding so many references, like if at the end of each chapter you have almost hundred references, and by the end of your thesis you have almost let's say. 200 or 250 references managing the 200 and 250 references manually can actually be a nightmare uh, mainly will automate this complete task with you i told you just now go to in the mainly desktop go to the tools option you will find an option install mainly uh, uh, sorry install ms word plugin as soon as you will click on that option uh, it will take a few minutes and then magic will happen Uh, after that installation is complete and you will open your ms office word under the references tab you will find a tab like this this tab is called as mendeley cytomatic if you have a look at this mendeley cytomatic tab this mendeley cytomatic tab helps you or automates your task of inserting a citation inserting bibliography uh just a minute uh inserting bibliography uh inserting your citation uh everything is automated by this how it is done let's have a look at this moment first we will check in this mainly cytomatic tab my default reference style is ieee i'll change the style later on but at the moment we'll start working with ieee style this is a technical document i am in the process of working on so let me add a few references to this document wherever in your word document you would like to add references remember the first step will be take your cursor to that particular point i'll take my cursor to the first statement end of the first statement where i want to insert a citation and after taking my cursor to that particular point i click on the button insert a citation as soon as i click on the button insert a citation have a look insert citation uh, window opens up this insert citation window allows you to insert a citation in two mechanisms if you remember the author title or year in your library of that particular document that you want to cite you can add that and it will search it from your library and insert it automatically obviously remembering this is a difficult task so if i don't remember that i can simply click on the button go to mendeley it takes me back to my mendeley desktop when it takes me back to my mendeley desktop now i can select any document that i wo actually want to cite so in this case let's say i want to cite uh, this particular document i click on that particular document and there is an option it send citation to plugin i click on that option and have a look automatically a citation is inserted and the citation is numbered 1 because obviously this is the first citation that i have inserted next thing if i want to insert bibliography go to the end of your document wherever you want to again start inserting your bibliography from and click on the button insert on the tab insert bibliography this tab will automatically insert your bibliography so if you have a look i have inserted a reference and a bibliography for that particular reference is inserted into my document next obviously uh, there are times when with a given reference i would like to insert multiple references how do i insert multiple references again the same rule applies take the cursor to the point where you want to insert a reference go back to the insert citation button select go to mendeley library and you can select the second document that you would like to insert in this case again i have selected the document and now i will click on the cite option as soon as i click on the cite option now i have a look at the same place at the same point in my document i have two citations one and two both in ieee style inserted into my document now let's say if two documents if two citations are inserted into the same place the citation style says that the citation style actually changes how does the citation style actually change i will have to merge these two citations to merge these two citations i'll select both the citations using my arrow keys and once i select both the citations using my arrow key arrow keys have a look my insert citation button now changes over to merge citation as soon as this button changes over to merge citation and i click on it my citation style changes it now becomes 1 comma 2 
so that is how i can insert citation we'll insert a few more citations uh, have a look mendeley will automatically manage the complete thing for you let's say i go over to the next line i want to insert another citation uh i say go to mendeley i take another citation over here and i click on cite uh remember one thing when inserting citations you mendeley does not restrict you to just one particular folder in your library you can cite a citation from any folder of your library how can i do that uh let's say this citation uh, i have inserted over here now i need to insert another citation i go to another line again i click on insert citation i click on the go to mendeley library but this time i won't insert a citation from this particular folder i'll select another folder of mine online learning now in this folder of mine uh i want to cite some documents from this particular folder so let's say i select some document from this folder i select this particular document from this folder and i click on cite as soon as i click on cite again have a look my citation is added and if i want to check whether the citations are actually being added have a look your bibliography is automatically being made once after you have first selected insert bibliography option so now your bibliography is also being constructed now comes another problem uh let's say i added a citation but suddenly i realized that it was an incorrect citation i don't want to add that so what i can simply do is i can select that citation and i can simply click on backspace or i can simply delete that citation from that place as soon as i delete that citation and let's say i refresh my document have a look my citation number 4 has changed over to citation number 3 so i have reordered my citation let's say i again do something in between at that given place itself from where i deleted the citation instead of that citation i want to add another citation i again uh, go to insert citation go back to mendeley and this time i want to add some other citation so i'll select that other citation document uh i select this particular document and i click on it have a look again the citation that i added in between has been numbered as 3 and my last citation has been numbered as 4 so that is the power of the mendeley citation manager that you keep reordering your citations you keep adding citations you keep inserting citations whatever you keep doing it mendeley very patiently is going to automatically manage all your citations in every style that you actually want to do that in second question that comes over here i am done with inserting citations i am done with uh, deleting my citations i am done with doing everything but now the problem is i prepared this document for one general which was accepting in ieee style but now i that general rejected it or i changed my mind my guide said don't no, no, don't submit it to that particular general uh, this is like this xyz general you need to submit it to this particular general as soon as i go to the general guidelines the first uh, shock that comes to me is that i actually see that the general is not accepting citations in ieee style they are following an entirely different style of citation management now when they are following an entirely different style of uh, citation management what do i do in that case very simple thing to be done in that case no need to worry no need to have sleepless night you will not have to prepare a new document the only thing you will have to do is only select your complete document or you can even select your citations and go to the citation style and let's say you can change the citation style let's say i change the citation style to chicago manual set as soon as i change to chicago manual have a look again some magic has happened in my document and now my citations in the document are not numbered uh in the ieee style they are numbered according to the chicago manual style if i go back to my bibliography have a look my bibliography style has also changed so that is how you can automatically manage any of your citation styles you can actually change it to any citation style that you want i change it to a uh, apa 6th edition my style changes to apa 6th edition 
I changed it to Springer Lecture Notes in Computer Science. My style has changed to Lecture Notes in Computer Science. So that is the first part of your Mendeley Citation Management. How you can build your library and how you can cite uh, documents or how you can cite uh, documents from your library into your uh, Mendeley, uh, into your document, into your Word document. So that is the first part of uh, your Mendeley library where you can actually uh, add documents to your library in an automated way. And trust me, if you start using Mendeley, if you start working with Mendeley, it's just a matter of shifting uh, your uh, conventional style of writing technical documents. Uh, trust me, it won't require you many days to train yourself in Mendeley. Using it is very simple. It is very easy. It is not just uh, difficult. The only simple thing you will have to do is that uh, start writing your do technical documents through uh, Mendeley. And once you start writing them through Mendeley, every day while you are working on Mendeley, before you uh, exit Mendeley, just remember to sync your documents. Saroj ma'am, if it is not visible, uh, I would request you kindly uh, uh, check your net connection because I hope everything is visible my end. I would reselect it. Uh, Ma'am, please share the screen again. Yes, it is visible. I have. It is visible. Okay, great. Thanks, sir. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Mistake from my side. I'll select the screen again. Uh, anyways, so trust me, writing your document, you are not able to connect with MS Word plugin. So kindly refresh uh, your Mendeley. Shut it down. Open it again. Kindly refresh it. It will take some time, but uh, you will be able to download MS Word plugin. And once your MS Word plugin is downloaded, it will be visible in your MS Word as a Mendeley Cytomatic plugin. Anyway, uh, trust me, writing your documents will become very easier. And if you're writing research papers, if you're writing your research uh, thesis, your work will reduce by almost half because complete reference management of your work is now the headache of Mendeley. You just need to be concerned about what to write in your paper. Wherever you need to uh, insert a citation, you can directly do that through uh, Mendeley itself. So that is automating references, but Mendeley is not just reference management. Uh, that is a basic thing that we have. Uh, nobody asks me, but generally people ask me that there are a number of citation management tools that are available in the market. Uh, many of you or few of you will already be uh, using those citation management tools. If you talk about the market, the most common citation Citation management tool provider. Adding documents we have already seen from the slide, so I'll go over these slides. We have already seen web importer. This is coming to importing your documents. So uh, that is what I was trying to tell you. Mainly is not just citation management. It is much more than that. But the first question that comes to mind is why just mainly? Uh, many of you might have used some or the other citation management tools at some point on your life. And if you have a look, these are the most common citation management tools that are available in the market. But uh, remember, for all these citation management tools, uh, they are not as easy and uh, easy to use and uh, well connected as Mendeley. If you talk about Zotero, Zotero is obviously a free citation management tool available on the web. Uh, but EndNote and Reference Work, they are not free tools. EndNote is a product of Thomson Reuters, and Reference Work is a product of ProQuest Official, and it is the registered citation management tool for University of Berkeley, Berkeley Commons, UBC. Zotero, so if you talk about, obviously it is a free to use tool. It is easier to gather citations for non-PDF and uh, PDF content on Zotero, but its single capture click works more well with database, catalogs and website than mainly web importer. It is open source, but uh, it cannot be acquired by any single company. Uh, mainly, if you talk about it, research content is primarily in the PDF format. But yes, obviously, you can download it in any other format also. It is perfectly compatible with an integrated PDF viewer. You can create citation records by just importing a PDF file. Mainly.org has the strongest website and online community platform. Coming over to EndNote, EndNote is not free. It is owned by Thomson Reuters. It can be purchased with an educational discount through the Washington University. So that is why if you talk about the different citation management tools that are available in the market, 
Mendeley is the most popular and the most easy to use citation management tool that is already available in the market. Uh, adding new research to the Mendeley, I already told you two basic mechanisms for adding new research to Mendeley. The first mechanism that we had was you could drag and drop uh, folders and documents directly into your uh, Mendeley with the word. Yes, uh, Avijit sir, I would uh, surely repeat how to add uh, Mendeley to Word, uh, Mendeley library to Word. I'll give you an introduction to that again. Uh, just give me a few minutes. So you can uh, add uh, your Mendeley web importer and through your Mendeley web importer again, you can uh, add documents that we have already demonstrated. A third option that is already there, you will have an account on Mendeley web. Now, once you have an account on Mendeley Web and if you go to Mendeley.com and you log in with your account, uh, this is the kind of dashboard that you have. You have a dashboard, My Library Papers. From there also, if you want, you can add documents to your Mendeley library. Even that option is available. Uh, document Lookup tab, that is the rightmost tab, if you remember. That will give me the details of uh, any of my documents. I can even modify this tab. We discussed it in the very beginning, initial beginning. So Mendeley will also add its meeting information uh, automatically and it will even ask you to check uh, whether the information is correct or not through the details are correct option. You can even search by title. Uh, Web importer, we have already discussed that. Uh, it will allow you to save your documents, import references and save them to Mendeley. Uh, Mendeley has partnered with Scoopers and Science Direct. So that was about Mendeley Reference Manager, managing your library, syncing. Uh, syncing your library with the Mendeley Cloud. I'll go back again to how we can use uh, Mendeley with the, uh, how to add Mendeley with Word. Uh, to add Mendeley with Word, I go back to my Mendeley desktop. From your Mendeley desktop, you click on options. You will have an option, install MS Word plugin. At the moment in my Mendeley desktop, you can see uninstall MS Word plugin because my MS Word plugin is already installed. But once you go to your MS, uh, your Mendeley desktop, under the tools, you will find an option, Install MS Word Plugin. As soon as you will click on Install MS Word Plugin, it will take a few minutes, a few seconds to install the MS Word Plugin. Once the MS Word Plugin is installed, uh, after that, if you open your MS Word, to check whether the MS Word Plugin is installed or not, you open your MS Word, and you will see under the References tab, you will have a sub tab created with the name Mendeley Cytomatic. So that is how you can add uh, Mendeley to your Office Word. Is it clear now? Uh, I hope it is clear to everybody now. Uh, thank you, Abhijit sir. And the next is the option of searching documents uh, right on the left hand side, wherever you have your Mendeley uh, library actually visible. Below it, you have a search option. Uh, this option allows you to actually search your documents on the Mendeley web, uh, sorry, in your Mendeley desktop or your Mendeley library. To search your documents over here, you can search by year, you can search by author, you can search by whatever name that you want. There are a number of keywords. Uh, you can filter your documents by author, tab, publication, or the keywords of your document. It will show you all the documents that are related to a particular search criteria that you will select in this case. Uh, next is highlight and annotate your documents. In uh, telling you how to read, uh, how to cite your documents, I forgot to tell you this uh, basic characteristic of Mendeley. This should have been the first one. But remember, the Mendeley PDF viewer is one important thing that will allow you to highlight and annotate it with your document. To use this, remember, the Mendeley PDF viewer allows you to read as well as annotate your document. So that is why I told you people that the only thing you need to do for working with Mendeley is you will have to just modify your way of working. So what we'll have to do, let's say I go back to my Mendeley desktop and if I click on any of the documents, as soon as I double click on a document, have a look along with my library in the centermost pane my document uh, is open now. I can read, annotate my document and I can do whatever I want with this document. To annotate my document with any comments, any kind of uh, uh, 
uh, annotations i simply need to do is i simply need to add a note or i can simply highlight i can highlight text i can select on some text and i can highlight that text i want to add a note at uh, some place uh, over here let's say so i'll simply click on the note uh, option and i will drop my note over here have a look my note in this case is added with my name that is the advantage that the notes get added with my name so next time i want to share this particular document uh, with let's say any of my collaborators any of my co-workers i can uh, actually share this annotated document with my collaborators with my co-workers and they'll come to know that this particular annotation or this particular thing is uh, was actually written by me so that is another feature pdf viewer of mendeley it allows you to annotate your documents it allows you to read your document it will allow you to mark your documents as your favorite if i go back to my mendeley library and have a look mendeley library shows me the type of document it is showing me the pdf uh, logo to show me that it is a pdf document uh, the green color over here indicates that i have already read the document if you haven't read the document it will be visible in another color and before that you have a star icon any of your favorites you can mark it with a star so that will be marked as your favorite documents in the mendeley so that is the mendeley annotate and highlight feature that we have uh, with this annotate and highlight feature you also have a feature called as look up term definitions if you want while reading a particular document mendeley also provides you the option that uh, will come in handy that you can look and annotate the uh, meaning of a particular document or a particular feature it will simply uh, allow you to look up the definition for the particular thing on the web so that is another feature that we'll have over here uh, next we'll have is after look up term definitions uh, yes sir the record the session is being recorded and my team members would be sharing the recording of this session uh, uh by tonight because uh, i hope you all understand recording online session will take time so by tonight uh, they will be uploading the recording of this session so don't worry i shall even share the ppt and the guidelines for downloading mainly with all of you the only aim that we have for this session is that all of you by the end of the session should uh, be uh, effective mainly users so don't worry we are here to help you and make you a uh, effective mendeley user the next is mendeley citation plugin uh, we have already discussed how to install the citation plugin yes sir you can do the annotations in the document itself that is what i just demonstrated that you can uh, double click on any document in your mendeley library it opens up the complete document for your reading and annotation so annotation of your complete document is available with mendeley and uh, these annotated documents can be shared can be saved they are automatically saved you don't need to save them explicitly they can be saved and they can be shared among your group that is what we'll demonstrate next how to share these documents among the group so they can be easily shared among the group of your collaborators or your co team workers so that can be easily done uh, citation we have already discussed the mendeley citation plugin the ms word plugin for that and how to manage uh, citations with that you can generate in text citation in word by simply clicking on insert or edit citation button in the ms word uh, mendeley citomatic plugin in ms word you can also uh, actually search by author title or year or selected uh, document from your mendeley library uh, you can insert your bibliography there is one simple button called as insert bibliography take your cursor i repeat again before inserting bibliography or before citing any references simply take your cursor to the point in your document where you want to insert bibliography or you want to insert a citation and just from there click on insert bibliography choose your style and you are done the rest of the task will be done by mendeley itself you don't need to worry about how to perform the rest of the task so that is how you can insert your bibliography and that is the complete first feature of mendeley that is mendeley reference manager the next feature of mendeley that you have is collaborate using mendeley uh, you can join and collaborate groups to share uh, references what makes mendeley uh, unique is the ways in which you can collaborate with colleagues and friends 
and discover new research you can share papers you can make notes on the same article and uh, even you can meet new researchers in your field collaboration is a key component of research and uh, that can be easily done through uh, mendeley how we can do it let's have a look uh, you have an option called create groups in your library only if you go below your library in mendeley if i go down to my library i'll have to move a lot down because uh, i have a number of folders in my library but if you have a uh, look in your library just before the create folder option just uh, below the create folder option you have an option called as groups now understand the option called as groups allows you to create a group with mendeley it allows you to enter a group name it allows you to describe your group it allows you to select the type of group that you want whether you want a public group you want an invite only group you want a private group so you can actually create a group with your mendeley that option is available with your mendeley you can see the groups you created you can even join some groups that have been created previously that are already available on mendeley.com or you can follow certain groups once you create a group you can add documents to a group by simply dragging and uh, uh dropping your uh, uh documents into that group and you can even select or you can share that uh, documents to your private group members and remember the advantage of sharing documents among the mendeley groups is the fact that all your members all your co-workers can keep working on the document each of the co-worker will be assigned a different color so whatever annotations your co-workers make to the document they will be visible in different colors so that you come to know that okay which uh, document or which member has made what changes to what particular part of your particular document so that that way you can collaborate with each other you can collaborate with your friends your co-workers who are let's say sitting in some other state or some other country and during this period uh, when uh, travel is not uh, advisable you can easily collaborate with them you can search uh, you can search your uh, work uh, you can share your work with them and you can easily work on your uh, common documents that you are actually making uh, you can have private groups they let you share full text documents with a limited number of members only anybody inside the group can see the group their files or they can even annotate uh, but remember this group for security reason they will not be found on the mendeley groups page and no one on the network will know about the existence of this group only the ones who are members of the group will know about the group so only the owners and the invited members of the group will know about it the owner must invite the people to join and members must accept to join the group in order to be member for that particular group these groups are perfect for collaboration among the limited set of members that we have you can share your papers among these groups when you share full text document that is what i was telling you that if you are a member of a private mendeley group you can view full text document papers collaboratively annotate and highlight the documents and mendeley will automatically assign a different color to each member of the group so whatever annotation every member of that group will do that will be clearly visible in the paper uh, when you go to mendeley web mendeley web simply means you need to log in to the mendeley web mendeley.com through your username and password when you go on to the mendeley web over there you can find the public groups that are available online on the mendeley community and among those public groups also you can join or follow any public group as per as the uh, allowance that the group is actually providing uh, you can browse for proper popular groups in your particular domain in your particular area you can create your own mendeley research profile now that is an important thing because mendeley recently has added a feature called as mendeley stats now what do you mean by mendeley stats generally most of us uh, need to know that how many times a particular publication of ours has been cited we would like to know that what is our h index what is our uh, i index uh, i will be coming to latex himani ma'am don't worry i am not over with my slides and mendeley at the moment i am only discussing the second feature of mendeley that is collaboration so don't worry i will be coming over to latex also Uh, i am not through uh, mainly knowledge is vast and i can share as much as you want so don't worry about that uh, anyways create talking about creating your research profile i'll come back to what i was saying this is a new feature of mainly research profile uh, can be maintained as soon as you create your mainly account uh, you have your account you can go to mainly.com you can log in with your account 
and you can create your own page when you create your own page obviously you will be adding your publications to that page uh, but the good part is that because mainly is now overtaken by elsevier it has collaborated by elsevier so your research profile is also being maintained by mainly through what is called as the mainly stats if you have a look i'll take you to my browser and uh, in my browser if you have a look i have already uh, i will close this mainly web importer and uh, i'll take you to the my mainly account now if you have a look this is my mainly page so this mainly page if you have a look in the feed section it uh, the mainly i told you it is a uh, Uh, now overtaken by elsevier so at the rate 2020 mainly uh, limited and you have the elsevier tree that can be seen over here this is my complete mainly profile page in the mainly profile page i can see my feed my feed will suggest me articles depending on the areas that i am currently working on i am currently interested in it will show me my library as soon as i'll click on the library it will take me to my library Uh, my mainly library i can import my documents i have a look if you have a look again at the left hand side over here my complete mainly library is available have a look my complete mainly library is simulated over here i have all my folders that were there in my mainly library available over here i can click on any of the folders i can access the documents of the folders in my mainly library over here uh, i can go to the suggest option the suggest tab will suggest me new groups new um, people or new papers new articles that i can add to my library i can read them i can follow them sir i have already shared it is shown post just a minute i'll stop sharing it and i'll share it again i suppose it was i'll share again my browser i'll again start sharing uh i hope it is visible yes ma'am great fine so this is my mainly library remember this is on mainly.com when you log in with your username and password on uh, mainly.com uh, this is how your page becomes visible you have a number of tabs over here the feed tab will suggest me that uh, what all documents or what all articles are new in this particular area it will also show me which all people are following my work so it will help me expand my network the library tab in this page is as soon as i click on the library tab my the library tab will actually show me my complete mainly desktop library that i have maintained on mainly my mainly desktop so if you have a look i have my complete library available over here on the mainly web uh, suggest will be new articles new groups to follow and what are the new works from the people that i follow what have they done new uh groups will show me any groups that i am following any new groups that i would like to create i have made or any groups that i would like to join data set that is another feature uh most of me when we work with some kind of original data uh elsevier etc they have a feature where we can actually share our data online so even mendeley has this feature of maintaining our data sets uh if you go on to mainly data sets you can discover mainly data you can create a data set over here you can find an existing data set from 24.2 million data sets from domain specific and cross domain repositories that are already available so that is how you can even uh, search for your data sets on mainly and uh, uh 
i go back again after that careers any new careers you want uh, mainly has to offer it will show you that funding will give you the information of any new funding that is available uh, last feature that i was uh, in the middle of discussing and i'll come back to that that is mainly stats feature now if you have a look at this page this is actually my statistics page on mainly like google scholar maintains our citations we generally see our h index our i index or number of citations that we have for our different papers they are available on google scholar now google scholar actually collects those citations from a number of sources and it shows, uh, says it for shows it for each and every author the same uh, capability has been added to mendeley and is called as the mendeley stats feature so your complete citations would be visible on your page in mendeley through this mendeley stats and if you have a look these are my citations and i will tell you these are more trustable than google scholar because all these citations all these h index all these citations in this year the total number of readers uh, in this year they are all powered by either mendeley or they are powered by science direct or scopus so obviously as compared to google scholar they are much more trustable so tomorrow if you want to apply somewhere you want to submit your citations your h index etc somewhere and they tell you we don't want the google scholar uh, numbers because we don't trust them you can actually give you share your mendeley page with them that gives you the actual uh, h index the citations the yearly citation the number of readers and everything is powered by a uh, scopus or science direct so obviously this is more trustable as compared to google scholar so that is another feature of mendeley that we have uh, you can create your research profile on mendeley.com your account when you sign up for your mendeley and remember but uh, this profile you will have to maintain yourself you will have to keep adding your new research papers etc into this profile of yours and once you add it after that mendeley is going to uh, maintain the whole thing that won't be a problem but firstly you will have to add it on yourself uh, connecting with colleagues you can even connect with your colleagues uh, on mendeley.com to discover new research uh, recommendations and impacts you have the literature search feature that is already there in the mendeley desktop you can search the mendeley catalog online also from your mendeley.com account you can quickly add a uh, new research your screen is madam your screen is not coming oh oh sorry sir is it visible now uh, please go in your slide show mode man is it visible now sir yeah it is visible now uh the, there was a problem in between so i had stopped sharing everything so oh, that is why i forgot sorry <laughs> uh anyways uh, we'll come back to what we were discussing so you can collaborate with your researchers you can share your work you can even follow the work that is going on globally in your particular domain or your area of research through mendeley and uh, that is the use of the mendeley web actually so mainly web actually serves for two purposes of yours uh, firstly it will allow you to uh, share your own mainly desktop your complete mainly library uh, with you yourself anywhere on any particular system just on the click click or, or just on the go through any particular web browser through which you can connect with mainly desktop and the second basic feature that we have with mainly is that obviously i can quickly add new research i can collaborate with researchers globally i can follow their work i can share my work with them i can ask them to review my work that all is possible through mendeley.com so that is the use of mendeley web uh, that is all the three features of uh, mendeley that we have remember blog.mendeley.com this website actually provides you new tips it uh, helps you stay connected with mendeley Uh, all the resources for all new features that are being added into mendeley they are available at resources.mendeley.com uh, which is accessible from almost uh, all the player, common social media platforms and it's time to change the way we do research through mendeley by using mendeley now i come to the last basic part uh, i told you in the beginning that mendeley is compatible with all the platforms but obviously what i discussed what i demonstrated was only uh, mendeley on uh, microsoft office word now what happens if i am writing a paper on latex and i want to insert bibliography into the paper from latex so for those unfamiliar with latex i'll give a quick introduction before i go into the details 
For those unfamiliar to LaTeX, LaTeX is a typesetting system with inbuilt features enabling the generating technical and scientific documentation. I'll give you a very simple explanation. Most of us, if you have worked on a web page, if you have seen the source code of a web page, a web page is nothing. It is actually a collection of data in a numerous number of HTML tags. So the similar way, LaTeX is a type system, a typesetting system which already has a number of typesetters which are available for all the parts of a, let's say, professional document or a manuscript. What you can simply do is you can uh, enable the generating of technical and scientific documentation through this LaTeX. You can, uh, earlier LaTeX was, uh, LaTeX had to be installed on your system and only then you could use LaTeX. But today you can easily create and update your documents on LaTeX using online tools like overleaf.com. I generally work on this online tool. I have never worked on the LaTeX uh, online desktop. For further clarity, BibTeX now understand. Uh, to uh, insert your bibliography into LaTeX, mm -hmm. try to understand. Microsoft Word, the step that I, the procedure that I followed was I first inserted my citations into my Word document. And as I was inserting my citations into my Word document, my citations or bibliography was constructed by uh, Mendeley itself. LaTeX, I don't have to insert my citations one by one. Generally, what is done is I have a BibTeX tool. Uh, BibTeX is a tool as well as a file format that is used to list and process references, mostly in conjunction with your LaTeX documents. So in order to integrate this BibTeX tool or your Mendeley desktop to do referencing into a LaTeX document, the simple thing that you have to do is on your Mendeley desktop, you will select tools and options. The last option that is available over there, I go back to my Mendeley desktop and under tools, if you have a look, you have a last option called as options. Uh, you will go to this last option called as options and over here, if you have a look, I'll go back to my sharing option. Uh, all sharing has stopped. I am sorry. I repeat again what uh, I was uh, repeating. I'll, uh, in order to Kanchna ma'am, I have shared it. I hope it is visible now. I go back to I go back to my Mendeley desktop. Under the tools, I have the last option called as options. In this options, if you have a look, I have a document details, I have a file organizer, I have a watch folders, but I have a tab called as BibTeX tab, and I have a tab called as Zotero tab. Zotero is a another free uh, online reference management citation management tool. What you can do is that if you already have a few bibliographies, a few references that are previously maintained in Zotero, you can uh, uh, do Zotero integration. That means you can uh, locate your Zotero SQL Lite database to enable continuous Zotero import. Remember, uh, Zotero will maintain your bibliography in an SQL Lite database. Those SQL Lite database can be imported from Zotero into your Mendeley account. That is possible. But if I go to the BibTeX option, have a look, my BibTeX option shows me BibTeX export preferences. Export preferences, that means I can add them to some documents. And the first option in this case is escape latest special characters. BibTeX syncing. BibTeX syncing keeps one or several BibTeX files up to date with documents in your library. Documents in the needs review collection will not be exported in this case. So you can create one BibTeX file per group. Per group in this case means per folder in your library. You can create one separate BibTeX file per folder in your library and you can enable BibTeX syncing. Once you enable BibTeX syncing, it will ask you for a path and you can select that path anywhere on your system and you can actually uh, share your uh, files. So you can actually uh, connect your Mendeley desktop to your BibTeX also. So that is what, for further clarity, BibTeX is a tool as well as a file platform, file format used to list and process references, mostly in conjunction with LaTeX document. Uh, to do this, uh, to integrate your Mendeley desktop to referencing in LaTeX document, on Mendeley desktop, you will select tools options. From here, in the options dialog box, you will select the BibTeX tags, uh, tab. Once there, you will tick on the box labeled Enable BibTeX Syncing and select one of the options that you will prefer in this case. Uh, I chose the middle option in this case. Create one BibTeX file per collection. 
uh, I'll uh, again say per collection or per group in this case implies for per uh, folder in my Mendeley uh, library. I can click on apply followed by OK. This will generate one dot .bip file for each folder that I have created on my Mendeley desktop. And where can I access these particular files? These files can be accessed on the path that I have given to store these particular bittex files on my system. So I can access these bittex files from that particular path and then I can simply add those bittex files to my latex document. Uh, auto generation of .bit files, that is another important thing. The next step is to create a folder where you will store all the articles or references pertaining to your manuscript. This will generate a .bit folder as per your settings in the preference menu. So whatever uh, settings we have done in the preference menu, uh, the .bit folder will be stored in that particular location. Any articles or references that are added to a given folder. Now remember one thing, uh, the next question, obviously a very genuine question is that I created this .bit text folder, I did all the setting right at the beginning. But after that I kept adding a few documents to my uh, document, to my library to my folder. So obviously remember stay assured you don't need to worry any articles or references that are added to a given folder are automatically synchronized and changed are reflected in the bibtex file with the same name as the folder that you created. In my example I have taken a folder called as uh, latex so therefore my mainly desktop if you have a look it automatically generates a latex file uh, 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 Bib text file called as latex.bit and with all the document details for the references within that folder. So if you have a look, all the documents that I have this in this folder, they are available as references in this. To add citation using latex and your automatically generated bib text file to your latex file text in the bibliography slash bibliography tag. And over there you can add the complete path of your uh, bibliography file. Once you add the complete uh, bibliography file, that can be e easily. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Khalid, sir. Bibliography uh, bibtex uh, format is only related to latex. And the reason for that is that latex generally adds uh, bibliography files in this uh, bibtex format. But uh, yes, if uh, you prefer using bibtex format, you prefer working with bibtex format, you can also import your bibtex format. You can uh, these files into any of your documents but generally generally the people who generally work with latex they require these bib text files on ms word we don't require these bib text files uh, ms word we simply require our documents with a bibliography and citations and that is automatically done using uh, mendeley itself for further detail information i have also given the link where you will find step by step uh, steps for actually importing your bib text from mendeley into your latex uh, before I move in, move on further, uh, one last feature of Mendeley that I forgot discussing with you people and I like to discuss. Uh, one major problem is I created uh, my Mendeley, I created my document and uh, wait, I'll go back to my Word document. Now, uh, one another case that you people may come across. You create a document, a wonderful paper with, uh, and you did uh, reference management with Menle, citation management with Menle. Remember, a paper that has citation management using Menle has higher chances of acceptance in Elsevier Science Direct Based Journal as compared to a paper that has uh, where the citations have been done manually. The reason is very, very obvious that this particular tool is supported by uh, Google uh, for uh, by Science Direct and Elsevier, so obviously they prefer these papers. But a general problem that comes in such cases is I send the paper to the general, I submitted the paper to the general and very next day or after a few days I get a uh, simple review comment that kindly sub uh, submit a non Mendeley supported file. They don't want a file with uh, Mendeley citations enabled. I don't understand the problem over here but the problem is a very simple problem. Uh, most of these generals, most of these uh, search engines like Elsevier, Science Direct, etc. Uh, they have their own automated uh, tools for production of the manuscript, for formatting of the manuscript. Now the problem that comes over here is that your manuscript where you did citation management using Mendeley 
has certain uh, mental markers inserted into it. Obviously, those are invisible markers; they are not visible to us as normal users. But obviously, they have certain uh, markers inserted into them. Now, these files, when they put on their uh, software to produce the particular file, they are going to uh, have a problem. So, how do I provide them a file with non-Mendeley fields or with Mendeley fields disabled? The option is very simple. I go back to my Word document, my References tab, and remember there is a last option called as Export as. As soon as I click on this option called as Export as, this will provide me two options: compatible with LibreOffice and without Mendeley fields. LibreOffice is obviously the Word feature that you can use on your uh, uh, Unix system, and without Mendeley fields. Will actually allow you to save this file, this document without Mendeley field. So if you have a look, it is giving a default name. I'll take the default name itself, and it allows me to actually uh, save this document without Mendeley fields. So I'll close this document now, and uh, if I go back to my desktop. And uh, if I go back to my desktop, here I can see I have that document saved without Mendeley field. This is my document. So if I open this document and I share this document with all of you, uh, that is how you have your without a document with without Mendeley fields enabled, ready with the same citation, everything similar, no changes in the document. Only the Mendeley uh, citation fields have been disabled. You can easily share with document with uh, this document with any publisher who wants to use this kind of a document. So that is about your Mendeley citation management uh, and citing in LaTeX. Still here, I hope there are no doubts. It is clear to everybody. What is the correct APA style? And can you give an example, sir? APA is a style of formatting. Uh, it is called as American Psychological Association. And uh, it is generally a style of formatting that is generally used in the management domain. APA sixth edition is the most common uh, APA citation style that is actually followed as far as I know. But uh, yes, obviously after APA sixth edition, there might be new additions to the APA style uh, style files. But most of the journals that I have come across till today, they follow the APA citation style. Uh, how do I use the APA citation style in my Mendeley? Again, the thing is very simple. I go back to my Mendeley, uh, to my document uh, that I am working with. I'll go to the references tab of my Word document, and among the style, uh, have a look over here. I have two styles: American Medical Association. American Medical Association is the AMA style. Kindly don't confuse it with the APA style. Uh, American uh, Political Science Association is APSA style for political science domain. Uh, this document is again not shared because I have just opened it. Uh, I hope it is now visible. It is not the slide, sir. It is the document, the Word document. I opened it again, so it is not visible. I repeat again. Uh, the only way of using the correct way of using the APA style is very simple. Again, go back to your Word document, whichever Word document, technical document you are working with. Select all the content whose style you want to change. Uh, go to the references tab of your Word document. Come to your Mendeley Cytomatic sub tab. On the style, once you click, now in the style you will find a number of styles, and they are a bit confusing. You have American Medical Association. Obviously, that is the AMA style for medical domain. American Political Science Association (APSA) style for the political science domain. You have a American Psychological Association sixth edition. This is the most common APA style file that is used across all the journals. You can simply select this particular style, and as soon as you select this style, you will have a look that your complete document, the citation style, changes to APA sixth edition. So this is the APA sixth edition style. Uh, generally, what I have observed for a few journals is that a few journals have a bit of confusion regarding the citation style files. They generally tell you among the general guidelines that okay, we are following this particular citation style. But when you actually go a bit uh, down to the references and citation tab of the journal, they'll provide you with their own style. And their own style will be different as compared 
to the actual style file for that particular style file so in that case i have a suggestion for all the authors that uh, better than choosing the default citation style that is given in menle you can download the citation style file uh, import the citation style file of that particular journal into your menle desktop and follow it for that particular document that you are actually preparing so that way you can actually follow truly spec to the general citation style but uh, that is the apa citation style that we have the most common one is the apa 6 edition if uh, the style file changes a bit obviously uh, don't worry mendeley will automatically update it so that was regarding the apa citation style uh, any other doubts that we have in general what approach to transit existing research work uh, sir if you have existing research work and if you are managing that existing research work through some citation management tool the most of the citation management tools will allow you an option to save your references as bib text uh save your references as a bib text file and once you save it as a bib text file you can import that bib text file into your menle desktop but uh, yes if you are working on a document and you are working on it manually you have not used any citation management tool on that particular document a simple way would be it will require a bit of effort that effort would not be longer than one or two hours but the only simple thing is that for that particular document uh come to your menle desktop build your own mendeley library that means uh, create a separate folder for that document all the references that you have cited in that document add those references uh, import that add those references to google uh, import them from web importer import them references uh, those references one by one from web importer into your uh, mendeley desktop folder and once your folder is ready with all those references you can cite them at whichever place you had cited them originally in the manual document. the advantage of automating this complete document through mendeley would be that any redundancies would be removed that means if the same citation by mistake has been added by you uh, at two different places mendeley will automatically make it one so mendeley will avoid the redundancies in your citation so that is how you can uh, even get your existing work into your mendeley desktop uh, if you are working with some existing work any other queries Uh, well if there are no other queries i just have a last part that i like to discuss with you people and that is regarding indexing uh, that we have indexing when we talk about indexing nowadays is generally two major uh, indexers that we have indexing can either be done with clarivate analytics or elsevier uh, clarivate analytics is stands for web of science uh, it governs the four basic indexing sci it is obviously science citation index the top lowest index in uh, the field of uh, sciences uh, scie stands for sci expanded ssci is social sciences citation index and esci whereas when you talk of elsevier elsevier has one specific citation uh, indexing which is the scopus indexing which is governed by sci imago uh, what are the differences between each of these uh, scie stands for science citation index expanded it is a list of top notch journals by clarivate analytics index by thomson reuters the journals are evaluated for calculating the impact factor every year based on the citations the published papers and the reach of the papers etc esci stands for emerging sources citation index uh, a new type of list in which journals who have applied for scie get will get initially listed uh while the evaluation is going on uh ma'am sci and scie do not have the same value sci is the top notch uh only after passing through esci scie will you arrive at sci so sci is the top notch but yes scie and escie are also not bad enough that is what i'm trying to explain that scie is a expanded list and uh, esci is emerging expanded list so this is the list where your journal will get listed initially while evaluation is going on for scie or sci and journals of local importance may also get included in this list but there is no indexing of papers in thomson reuters and also no impact factor would be calculated for such journals ssci is a commercial citation index produced by clarivate analytics it was originally developed by the institute for 
scientific information from the science citation index it covers uh, approximately 3000 of the world leading uh, academic journals in the social sciences across more than 50 disciplines so ssci uh, is only for social sciences uh, coming over moving on further esci uh, aka emerging uh, four citation index is a lower rank index journals listed here are being considered for the more prestigious indexes like sci e and ssci and ahci uh, note this doesn't include sci science citation index which is the topmost which is the most prestigious index in other word esci is a feeder index to sci e ssci and ahci which in turn feed into sci so that is the hierarchy that is followed esci moves on to sci e and that further will move on to sci scopus is fundamentally different and is built more on inclusiveness than rather than on quality so if you look at the inclusion criteria scopus will mostly demand regular publications uh, proper peer review diversity in authors and editors and online availability of timely online availability of the journal it does require that the journal articles also be cited by other journals in scopus but not more than that scopus has many many more journals as compared to esci and sci uh, as a good news i like i am proud of sharing with all of you and uh, it has been shared with you before also even our journal uh, bjit international journal of information technology which is published by spinger is now scopus index and uh, with upcoming years we aim to actually reach sci so uh, but the next question that comes is that as scholars as researchers uh, what should be your choice so remember good journals will be in scopus but being in scopus doesn't mean a journal is actually good being in esci is again a different matter since the really good journals won't be in it but the really bad ones will also not be in it so it is entirely your judgment or your call to decide which journal is the best for your submission which journal is the best for your paper uh, as per clarivate analytics records the science citation index is a highly selective subset uh, of journals found in the sci e that is science citation index expanded journals journals in sci are typically the most consistently high impact titles in many different scientific disciplines emerging sources citation index provides a web of science core collection used with expanded options to discover new areas of research in evolving discipline as well as relevant interdisciplinary scholarly content across rapidly changing research fields these titles are also being evaluated on a continual basis for inclusion in sci ssci or ahci list clarivate will probably put sci journals at the top sci e journals that are not also in sci in the middle and e sci journals in the third place although they don't say this directly although uh, as per clarivate analytics this particular hierarchy is not direct it is not clearly mentioned but generally this is the hierarchy that is followed that first of all a general will be put into e sci list followed by sci e over the years and finally the general will to the sci list uh, next over coming to an important thing what uh, most of us mistake is that we generally think citation and references are synonymous uh, no please there is a difference uh, what is a citation as per wikipedia a citation is a reference to a published or unpublished source uh, for example in square brackets if you give two as per as the i to three style more precisely a citation is an abbreviated alphanumeric expression that is embedded in the body of an intellectual work that denotes an entry in the bibliographic references section of the work for the purpose of acknowledging the relevance of the works of others to the topic of discussion at the spot where the citation actually appears a bibliographic citation is a reference to a book article web page or other published item on the uh, that is available citation shall supply detail to identify these bibliographic citations or references uniquely different citation systems and styles are used in scientific citation legal citation prior arts the arts and the humanities and as we have just seen mendeley as a citation management tool 
supports almost most of these citation styles and uh, be it for any of the fields be it arts humanities sciences uh, so that is about citation why have google scholar citations i'll come back to that point lastly uh, google scholar citation is a simple free mechanism for authors to keep track of all citations to their articles you can also check who is citing your publication graph citations over time and compute several citation metrics you can also make your profile public so that it may appear in google scholar results when people search for your particular name it is easy to set up a google scholar account especially if you already have a google account so like other citation tracking services it tracks uh, academic articles but it also counts uh, these book titles and other documents towards author citation metrics but obviously there are a few agencies over the years that we have seen that they won't actually count for google scholar citations because obviously it's a debatable citation because it's freely available over the net uh uh matching to google scholar citation obviously mendeley have their mendeley stats feature which again will maintain your statistics your citations your h index etc but only of the articles that you have added to your mendeley account and remember all these citations all these statistics which will be maintained by mendeley will be powered by either mendeley or uh, science direct directly so obviously this is a more trustable option that we have with this i finish uh, with uh, my explanation of the mendeley citation management tool to all of you uh, my sincere suggestion is that please start using mendeley citation management as a part of your technical writing you will see you will observe that with time your technical writing task would be reduced by uh, marginally half because the complete task of citation management would be the result of mendeley would be done by mendeley automatically and uh, your work will also be much more trusted among the technical circle that we have nowadays so if you want to write more trusted work if you want to have uh, better publications i would suggest please go for mendeley thank you so much any doubts they are uh, welcome thank you so much ma'am if any participant thank you sir yeah in if any participant have any query any doubt they can please write in the chat window or you can mute on yourself what is the yeah. easiest way to bring previous papers in mendeley uh, sir uh, to bring previous papers in mendeley uh, the easiest way is that if you have a mechanism for importing a biptech uh, copy of all those references you can import them but uh, otherwise uh, in that case the only way would be it will be a almost one hour work but create your own mendeley library in your desktop create your own folder and get all the references one by one directly from the mendeley web importer tool into your document that is the most trustable way that i have been using for any technical old technical papers that i have so these are the two ways that we can use either depending on uh, what is the status of our technical document that we have any other doubt when there is a question uh, how to cite a website a uh, website can be cited uh, in the same mendeley web importer remember the complete website uh, will be only cited if you are only going to that particular website like for covid-19 data set if you are checking if you are taking the data set from covid-19 india.org so it will take the, the the web importer will take that complete web page but generally uh, specific web pages are cited by mendeley from that particular website along with the date of last access that means the date on which you access that particular web page so even uh, websites can be cited that is not an issue uh, mendeley web importer will do it automatically for you it is the same set of steps that we use for importing the different documents that we have done up till now uh, ma'am there is a one more question can we connect yes, google scholar with the mendeley so we cannot connect it but yes uh, you can go to google scholar and you can import your documents from google scholar to the mendeley web importer understand a simple thing mendeley is a citation management tool so hmm. mendeley web importer is a plugin that is installed into your browser it is not installed into google scholar yes. google scholar is a simple service a uh, simple i would say website that you are using through your browser you are requesting through your browser so mendeley web importer is a plugin that is there into your uh, browser itself 
So Google Scholar can be easily used to import your documents. I demonstrated imported documents on Google Scholar because Google Scholar is more trusted as compared to Google. It will give me access to better documents, uh, better published documents as compared to Google itself. I hope uh, that makes it clear. Yes, yes. Yeah. There is a one more question from Miss uh, Miss uh, Mashumi. How yes, to sir. Import the existing papers to Mendeley. That is uh, the same thing which you have discussed. Yes, ma'am. That is the same thing I have discussed earlier. Two mechanisms to import the existing papers. The first mechanism, and that will be much easier for all of you. Uh, in your Mendeley desktop, create a separate folder for those papers, your own library, and get those papers imported uh, from Mendeley Web Importer if you don't have the hard copy of those papers. If you have those papers in hard copy, the very simple mechanism of importing the papers is you can directly add the complete folder into your Mendeley library and you can put a watch on that particular folder. But if you have, don't have the uh, hard copies of those papers, obviously you can easily do it from the Mendeley Web Importer. Otherwise, if you have previously been working on some citation management tool like Zotero, etc., you can import a BIP text file from those particular citation management. All the BIP text, all the references that you had in that particular citation management tool would be imported as a BIP text file into your Mendeley library. And that you can add into any folder of your Mendeley library as such. Google Scholar also gives the option that you can download your citations in a BIP text uh, uh, format. And after receiving the BIP text format, you can uh, upload it in the, because it, I have used in the ORCID ID. Uh, we have downloaded the BIP text ID from the Google Scholar and add the details in my ORCID ID. So same, the same fashion, in the same fashion, we can add BIP text at the Mendeley browser. Yes, the same fashion we can add Biptex into the Mendeley browser into your own account at Mendeley.com. Yes. But uh, as far as your Google Scholar citation and your Mendeley statistics is concerned, you will always see that your Mendeley statistics is a less as compared to Google Scholar. The reason yes. behind that is uh, understand Google Scholar is actually going to uh, search for documents related with your name from the complete web. Now, they don't necessarily need to be some kind of technical document. Mendeley stats would only maintain or search for your documents from Science Direct Elsevier or from the Mendeley Cloud. That means the documents that you have added by yourself. So that is why Mendeley, the repository for Mendeley stats is more trusted as compared to Google Scholar. So over there, your statistics will always be less as compared to Google Scholar. But obviously, that is a more trusted uh, feature that we have. In fact, uh, now in academic world also, if you ask someone, Sorry, if you tell someone that I have this much citation in Google Scholar, they discredit and they say that Google Scholar yes, is not citation. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. You you have a, at the minimum possible citation should come from the scopus. If you have yes, SEI sir. in FEI, SEI citation, nothing better than that. But at this moment where this citation business is going on, they ask you, give me print out of your scopus page. Do you have a scopus page? And on yes, the Scopus sir. page, once you configure your account, is only your Scopus paper, which will be listed there. Yes, and sir. Also, primarily, if you connect, we take maybe a Scopus or other indexed publications where from your publications have been regarded. And that's yes, how out of, out of, say, one lakh publication, they have limited to, say, 10,000 publications. So now entire citation will play within 10,000. Earlier, yes, Google sir. Scholar was playing within lakhs. So the yes, yes, of Google Scholar is much more than what the uh, Scopus citation or other proprietary citations. But nonetheless, to start with, Google citation always encourages researcher. And people, I will not advise that don't go for Google Scholar citation. You must go. And uh, during NIRF, when AICT was deliberating which citation or which publication should be given or which indexing agency should be given how much weight. So they decided Web of Science will get 60% uh, weight. Scopus will get 30% weight and Google citation, Google Scholar indexing will get 10% weight. This implies if my paper is indexed at Google, I will get only 0.1 marks out of the 10% uh, marks and out of 10 marks. While as, while as if my publication is in a Scopus 30%. So this becomes 40 and the breakup rest, rest 60% goes to a long web of science. So it depends where we are. But every new author, if he starts thinking that I will get SEI, possibly he will get discouraged in the process, the way SEI journals are playing and the way SEI journals are handling papers. So it is uh, always advisable to start with 
uh, publications uh, start with citations from google scholar and in a five years time move slowly slowly to at least a scopus and then next five years you will move to sei that's what is the suggested route is there any other question i think so there are no uh, pending questions so yes. the participants two three two three clarification first uh, we undertake all efforts to upload video in time but you understand since last three four days there are problem of internet i don't know whether other participants are also getting but in delhi i am also getting some problem of internet connectivity and the moment inter internet connectivity is poor or internet connectivity is less then it becomes difficult to download entire video from the cloud customize it and then finally upload on the youtube so sometime it takes time so mr uttam is looking after that job and he endeavors his endeavor is to ensure that the same day maybe late evening the video should be video recording should be uploaded but even if it is not uploaded will get uploaded next day we try to upload at the earliest possible but if there are some delays going on then you please understand we are honest enough it is not a deliberate delay it is a technical delay please bear with us second dr vishal job is to collect ppts from all the speakers and try to pass on to you but all the speakers have got problem they keep on using uh, some copyright material from xyz sources and when you ask a copy of the ppt then under this domain of plagiarism and ethical compliance they start considering that what material to share in a ppt and what material not to share so they they start customizing the ppt and in that case it takes time some uh, uh, speakers will say will give you tomorrow some will say will give you day after tomorrow so then vishal is also held up unless a speaker give him slide how can he share you but nonetheless he is behind the speaker to give slides and uh, will share it to you and next important we have uh, uh, announced uh, the details regarding assessment and evaluation in which you might have gone through the rule book rule book says that 40% of the weightage of the assessment is being given of two writing summaries we have circulated sheet assignment sheet where there are three columns which you have to fill initial three columns we have already filled filled in so that you could save the time so rest of the three columns are very important have been designed in such a way that you get input enough input you get enough learning and you after doing that decide that what are take away for me and how will it change uh, my, uh, my personal or professional life whether at my workplace or at my home 40% weightage to this assignment 40% weightage to mcq in fact one mcq having a scored 80% plus is sufficient for you 80 79 till 79% a grade the moment you your uh, score comes 80% you will you are eligible to get a plus grade i expect and as, uh, you should aspire for that that all the participants who are attending fpp should get a plus grade not a grade you should not get uh, satisfied with a plus a grade you should not get satisfied with b plus grade or uh, every participant should undertake efforts to get a plus grade and is not difficult is just 80% the, the if first test why, why why options we have given one test if you have a score 80% plus so there is no appear in the second test in the third test or uh, look forward for any other test having a score 80% is important because then only a plus grade will come so that is how we have given option we will be conducting four mcq four multiple choice question test out of four you may register for any two and out of two you will appear in any way any test will be the first test whether it is second slot or third slot for you it will be a first test if you score 80% or plus in first test you need not to appear you do not to appear for the second test second test is only for the purpose that if by chance you could not get 80% plus in first test then you have one more option to improve and despite these two options if you finally come across a to a situation that both the tests you have given and could not score 80% come back to me come back to me demand driven examination sir i was not prepared and i could not score 80% now i am well prepared and can you conduct my examination but understand this mbp will be over on 25th so you have to come back to me latest by 22nd and tell me that on 23rd you are prepared i will schedule very special test for you 
and then it will give you an opportunity to perform better. The philosophy here is you have to earn marks. You have to perform. वो शायर का शेर है अल्लामा इकबाल का बहुत famous कि उदी को कर बलन देतना के हर तकनीर से पहले उदी को कर बलन देतना के हर तकनीर से पहले उदा बंदे से तो पूछे बता तेरी रजा क्या है हम आपको नंबर नहीं देंगे We will not give you marks. You have to earn marks. And the system has been configured in Moodle, LMS, Learning Management System. The moment you submit last question, immediately you can see that what is my what is my answer? How much marks I have scored? So that kind of system has been configured. Do not be afraid of this. I receive few messages on my WhatsApp, few concerns. Sir, so much of a strict system. System is not as strict at all. The only difference between other MDPs and this MDP is we are a little more disciplined, and you should appreciate we are more disciplined. That's how we try to start every session in time. We try to make sure that all processes are being followed in a disciplined manner. So once you are Uh, actively participating in FDP, I am not uh, uh, visualizing any problem. Why can't you score eighty percent plus, and why can't you get a plus grade? So forty percent to your assignment, forty percent to your M MCQ test, a first MCQ test. If you score, no need to appear in second one. But if you miss by any chance eighty percent in first MCQ test, you can of course appear in second MCQ test. If at all you miss a less than a, you miss eighty percent scoring. An opportunity in both the tests. Then come back to me. I will give you a third option based on your preparation. That when you will be prepared, then we'll float the test. That's how the system has been planned. And next twenty percent is purely on your attendance. So seventy-five percent is compulsion. But you maintain eighty percent to get A plus grade. And my wish, my expectation, my vision that every one of you should get A plus. If there are any other question related to this assessment, evaluation, or what we have circulated. Please come back and tell me what what are your questions. Saturday, which is eighteenth uh, of uh, this month, July, we have written a participants assessment and evaluation. You need not to uh, attend the classes. Whatever assignments, whatever documents which you are sending to us, initial evaluation is being done by Dr. Ritika, and then after on Saturday we'll sit. The team will sit and decide that what all evaluate where the evaluation is going. What is the track of the evaluation? So Saturday we will complete. It is our day. We will complete the work of evaluation for you. And if there are any deficiencies, we observe particular deficiency because of which few participants are going to get less less marks. Then we will come back to you. Dr. Ritika will come back to you after uh, our moderation process for those participants who are going to get less uh, uh, marks during the evaluation process. That is the part activity on the Saturday. You need not to come. Yes, there is the test have been kept on the Saturday, so be prepared for the test. One participant is asking, what will be the syllabus for the MCQ? Please uh, understand, just attending this lecture is sufficient. So the lecture conducted before the MCQ test is the syllabus. This implies that the first MCQ test, which day we have a sixteenth. First MCQ test is sixteenth, Vishal. Um, first MCQ test is 15, correct? So before that test, this test is in evening, 8 to 8:30. So 13, 14, 15 means three days, seven sessions, six sessions, and inaugural. Seven sessions together will constitute the syllabus for 15th test. If you are appearing for 16th test, 16th uh, second day means uh, 16th uh, slot. Then again, the uh, nine sessions means 13, 14, 15, 16. The all these four days. Nine sessions will be the syllabus. In the same manner, if you are if you are appearing maybe for uh, which is the next test, twenty first or twenty second, then the all syllabus right from the first day. So for you, scoring better is possible in earlier slots than the slots later. But nonetheless, as a teacher, I know that you can score even in the last slot much well. Any other question? Doctor Vishal, no other question. So, yes, dear all participants, my request, my request to all of you, please be punctual. It is an online and digital learning. You have to click right from your home. So, plan your activities at home in such a way that uh, whatever happens, but you are here by ten. 
we will not delay lecture even for one minute we will try to start lecture on dot time so whatever time has been given please follow that yeah, if you are writing send a, on email eh? can you mail the assignment sheet yeah dr vishal mail them once sir i already did on yesterday night sir okay Where rule, is our rule, book? rule book which slot is on which day Please read the uh, rule book. There it is written. Those who have not received mail, for them, please send once more. No problem. And we have given email ID fdp at the rate bbicamp.in on which you have to submit your assignment sheet. And please do not expect that after every submission, we will be replying back, Yo, thank you so much. I have received your assignment sheet. We will not, uh, may, many of the time, we will not do that. Dr. Ritika will compile the sheet, will come back to you if there are problem. And if we do not receive the assignment sheet in time, then also she will come back to you that I have not received the assignment. If you are not receiving anything from us, this implies that we have received your assignment. So you need not to worry. Any other question? Sir, when syllabus is different, then the weightage of MCQ must be different. Yeah, your question as a teacher is right because sometimes uh, you, you take internal exam out of two units and out of four units. But now the problem is those who will be appearing for later uh, slots of the MCQ will get more opportunity to prepare. But those who will appear for the initial slot will get less opportunity to prepare. So when there is a less opportunity to prepare, weightage will be more. When there is a more opportunity to prepare, weightage will be less. That is what is the philosophy behind it. So it will remain as it is, please. Can we type in the assignment? Oh, yes, you have to type at this moment. You have to send us, well, uh, type written in MS Word. Every session, summary of every session carry two, carries uh, two marks. So 20 sessions minimum you have to fill up. We are going to have close to 22, including validity, 23 sessions. So if you wish, you may uh, leave these three sessions. But I will advise you to write summary of all 22 sessions at least, and we will evaluate your best possible 20 sessions. So you have an option of uh, giving this choice to the evaluator that which, which 20 best sessions can be evaluated. So that should not get uh, any compromise on marks. Tomorrow, tomorrow onwards, all sessions are from 11 to 1 and, one, and 2 to 4. 